Hi guys, my name is Carl Anderson, and uh, I'm going to show you in this webcast how to display data in a custom and handmade um, ISP.NET website. And uh, more importantly, the data that will be displayed will be data bound to uh, to classes that are generated by my BOM producer. Uh, BOM is an acronym standing for Business Object Model, uh, which is a set of C# -sharp classes that allow you uh, to generate to 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 manipulate data in the persistence layer, and the persistence layer as well as the BOM layer are two layers that can be generated by confluent entities. So here in front of you, as you can see, I have a very small confluent entities model, uh, and its main part contact admin.xml, which defines a single entity, the contact entity, which contains three properties. It also contains several other parts, uh, one of them being the producers part, uh, the messages and instances. The producers define, well, define uh, what I want to generate. Each producer uh, generates code that is specific to its platform. For instance, the SQL server producer only generates uh, SQL scripts and can automatically run them on on a on a defined uh, uh, database uh, SQL Server engine, and uh, the BOM producer will generate a, s a bunch of C# -sharp classes. So here, uh, this one uh, points to my uh, contact admin persistence project, and this one points to my contact admin uh, class library project. I also have messages there that which uh, we'll talk about later in another webcast uh, uh, about localization, and also have a instances and instances uh, uh, XML part in which I'm defining instances of my contact entity, and as a consequence, the uh, SQL Server producer will generate. Uh, one line per each instance in my database. So I'm going to build all that right there and then once all the sources were built I'm going to add them to my project. There we go. So first I'm going to start by, added, by adding uh, the generated SQL scripts right there. So those were automatically run on my uh, local SQL Server engine, so my database was already created and initialized with the specified data. On top of that, uh, I also generated my BOM, my business object model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the generated files right there. And prior to this webcast, I already added the the uh, the required uh, references to build my project. So I'm going to build my project. So there it was compiled. It's compiling, and there we go. It's succeeded. So if you if we take a look at that, so we had we had a single entity, the contact entity, and for each entity, you always have two classes that are generated. One uh, uh, well to handle the unity, and uh, another one which allows me to manipulate collections of that entity. And uh, all those classes, by default, implement a set of uh, interfaces that will allow me to uh, data bind uh, controls of .NET applications well, and whatever types of .NET applications there are. I mean, it could be ISP.NET projects, uh, websites, or, or WinForms, or WPF, or, or Civilite application. Um, all all required and needed interfaces are implemented here, and on top of that, more than just generating my the the, the properties that I that I designed, you can see that I have by default uh, methods such as the loadal method that allows me to load a, a collection of my entity all entities that are stored in my database, and on the contact entity, you see that that. Uh, uh, I have my ID property that was that was uh, designed as well as the last name and the first name properties. And on top of that, I also have a bunch of default method methods, just like such as loading or saving and and validating my my object. So, anyways, uh, 
now that I have my bomb and my persistence layer, what we're going to do is in the web application we're going to add we're going to add a uh, contact list specs web page, and as you can see, uh, I don't have any uh, code behind, and that's very important because not having code behind files allow me to uh, well. I won't have to compile my website, so if ever I want to deploy a new version of my ISPX web page or another another version of my web page, uh, all, I, all I have to do is deploy my web page and add an entire DLL. So let's take a look at this web page. So it's a very straightforward web page, uh, apart from all the presentation code here. You can see that I only have two controls, uh, one being a data source and the other one being a grid view consuming the data source. My data source is mapped on the contact collection object uh, on the, that class that we saw uh, previously, and I'm I'm telling my uh, data source that um, each entry of my collection is of uh, the contact type, and more than well so it's is map on my contact collection but my contact collection class has several methods and I'm specifying as a select method the LODL method that that I've shown you right before so that when it will select uh, when it will retrieve data it will retrieve its data from well using this method and then the grid view is mapped on the object data source data source and uh, I'm disabling the auto generation, uh, auto generating feature here, and instead I'm specifying my own columns uh, with the header text that I want, and I'm mapping them on the on the on uh, on the the corresp on their corresponding property. So there, I've got it all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch this web page, and you'll see that automatically. Uh, the data source will call my little method, which will call my stored processor, which will load all data in my database and return them uh, uh, to my BOM. And, uh, and then the website, being data bound on that one, I will show my columns. So, so this is it for this webcast. And this is how you can easily display data uh, using uh, the BOM producer and the SQL producer.